YouTube, my family, and my friends. Here I am back once again with another video. Today, what I will pretty much be talking about is the printer settings. I will be printing from Corel Draw, and um, these printer settings, if you ask me, they're not universal from uh, like you get an Epson printer and you hit print. You know, each uh, software has its own printing settings that talks to the printer. So Corel has one, Adobe has one, Photoshop has one. They each have their own printer settings, right? So here today, what I'm going to print out is this biggie. As you can see, if I highlight the design, it is 25.313 inches in width, left to right, and 22.653 inches in height. If I were to try to print this out without changing any settings, it's going to try to print this out on eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. So what I do is I highlight the entire design, I go to file, I go to print. When I go to print, it brings up my print settings. Now, as you can see, I'm printing from Epson uh, Workforce 7620 series. I also have an Epson 2720 and as well as a Canon, but I haven't used a Canon in a minute. And I think I took the printer settings off. So, if we hit print preview right here, as you can see, it tries to break this image up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sheets. I could have just did four times three real quick, but I wanted to just go through there. One, two, three. <laughs> but all right, so as you can see, it tried to break it up into twelve sheets, each eleven and a half by uh, eight and a half by eleven. So let's close out of that and let's go to our printer preferences here once I click on the printer preferences what I like to do is change my paper source from auto select down to rear paper feed slot now on my Epson 7620 I believe on the 7720 as well as the 7710 they all have rear paper slots, rear paper feed slots, and those slots are for 13 inches. You know, you can put, well, not only for 13 inches, for paper or mediums that won't fit, necessarily fit in the traditional bay one or bay two tray. So, after you change it to rear paper feed slot, next you want to change your document size. Now, of of course they have letter legal 11 and a half I mean 11 by 17 they have the a3 they even have the super B down here 13 by 19 but my design is longer than 19 inches It's 22.6 inches so this super B if I chose that and then I hit okay apply it's going to break it up into 13 by 19 inch sheets. So I'm still need six of them. Watch this. Well, four sheets. I can get that out in four 13 by 19 inch sheets. But that's not what we're going to use. As you can see, I have sublimation paper. When I say sublimation paper, I went and bought a roll of 13 by 300 inch sublimation paper uh -huh. here it is right here I've cut some off the roll I've cut some off the roll here and it's actually koala as you can see koala sublimation paper all right so you can buy this roll uh, you can Google it or you can go on eBay and uh, type in 13 inch 
sublimation roll. And uh, I believe there's other companies out there that sell some, but you just want a sublimation roll. So what I did with my sublimation roll is I have a guillotine paper cutter. I use the guillotine paper cutter. And what I did was I cut off. Oh. I cut off two sheets of 13 inches by 23 inches. Because, of course, 13 by 13 is 26. So I needed two sheets sideways. And I needed both of those sheets to be 23 inches in width. So let's go back here, change it to the rear paper feed slot, and then go down here to user defined. See this down here, user defined? And then in the user defined section, I changed my paper width to 13, and I changed my paper height to 23 to compensate for the 22.6 inches. Then I hit OK. I'll leave the paper type on plain paper, bright white paper. And I change the quality to more settings and then crank it up to quality. So you have speed on the left, quality on the right. We want to crank it up to quality. Next, what I do is I go up here to more options. Inside the more options is where I get the option to mirror my image. I definitely want to mirror my image and I want to take the high speed off. All right, I hit okay on that. And then go, wait a minute, go back into my preferences. And right here on more options, you wanna change the color correction from automatic to custom. This is very important. Go in there and click on advanced. As you can see in mine, the color mode is at Epson Vivid. I know a lot of people say that you should choose ICM profiles and all of that. But I have no ICM profile set up. I just choose the color controls. I leave it on Epson Vivid. And I crank up the brightness to 3. The contrast to 3. And the saturation to 3. I leave everything else as it is. And I hit OK. I, I used to go in here and image options and all of that. I don't change anything. I leave it as it is. I mirror the image and take off high speed and then I hit OK. And then I hit apply. Now when I go to my print preview, it should only show two sheets. Wow. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Preferences. Rear paper feed, feed slot. User defined. Here we go. 13. Oh, that's what it is. My num lock wasn't on. I never changed this. So go to user defined. Change this to 13 by 26. Well, 23. 13 inches by 23. Hit OK. Then I can hit OK again. I hit apply. Now my print preview will show two sheets. One sheet. Two sheets. I hit foul and I hit print. My printer should cut on. As you can see, hopefully y'all can see I got it right here behind me. I did a little rearranging. My printer did cut on. I'm using the Wi-Fi functions on my printer. And the printer says load a single sheet of paper into the rear paper feed slot all right so what I do now I like grab me a sheet of paper hold on let me make sure this is 23 inches y'all I did some rearranging I was moving some things around yes this is 23 inches so next what I want to do is load it up with the white part out facing me and just slab this bad boy into the printer.
It is now loaded. I've, the printer now says press uh, the color button to start. It pulls the paper in. And it starts printing automatically. All right. Once that once that is finished printing, then I will load in my next sheet. What's going on here? Hold on. What window is that? Had all sorts of windows open, y'all. Please forgive me. All sorts of windows open. What window is that? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, that's my messenger window. Is that it? No? See, I had all of these windows open, y'all, in my OBS, but there we go. Still shouldn't take away from the tutorial. So I pretty much wait for that to print out. As y'all can see, it is printing out ever so wonderfully. Once that get done printing out, I'll print out the second sheet and then on to the tape together process. What's going on, y'all? Back again with another one. Here, I have the Gimme the Loop shirt. Check it out. Right? Dope. But next, what I'm about to do is I am Oh, that like that's about to break off of there. All right, let me finish this video. So I have the rhinestone part, which I'm lifting up right now off of my template. Here's the rhinestone template. All ready. Missing two song, stones, but I'll hand set those. And all I do is I take it, I bevel it over the design like so, and set it right in where it needs to go. Sometimes you may have to lift the plastic, the tape back up just to reposition it a little bit, but it'll sit in there perfect. I designed it to sit in there perfect, y'all. Cover it up with some packing paper. Adjust my pressure and press. Now rhinestones need about 320 degrees for, I go about 40 seconds. If y'all haven't seen this one yet, that was the first one. I did it in sort of like a pastel colors. But this one here, watch this. Watch this. A couple more seconds. Peel back the transfer tape. I can stick this back on the wall and reuse this again. Let me see if I can even pinpoint where it's missing the two stones at. I can't really. Oh, I see them. All I do is grab my bucket. Grab a, a single stone out the bucket. Place it onto the shirt like so. I see where the other one is missing that. Right here. Place that on there like so. Slide it up ever so gently. Cover it with a fresh sheet. 
And I'm sure that one has Biggie colors on it. Just a tad bit. Cover it like so. And press it again. For another 30 or 40 seconds to seal in those last two stones. Let me see if there's some Biggie. There should be. Yep. There's Biggie. Well, as you can see, it's got the clouds on there. Real faint. A few more seconds, y'all. Few more seconds. It's done. I can cut my heat press off right now. I've had it on quite some time. And here's the reveal. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. If you're definitely liking this video, smash that like button. You know, also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my channel where I show you. I, I inspire people, you know. Not only do I inspire people, I want to be inspired by others. So please leave your comments down below. Um, this shirt right here, this shirt feels awesome. This is a, a Cricut brand shirt. I got this at Michael's on sale the other day. So... Check this out. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And I'm out. Give me the loop. Give me the loop. I'm a bad boy.